we're going to finish going over 10.4 today. Um, this is where we're adding, subtracting, and multiplying radical expressions. Remember, we already did number one, and we did it by, again, pulling out the biggest perfect square that was a product or a factor. So reminder, if it's helpful, your perfect squares are 1, 4, 9, 16, 25, 36, 49, 64, 81, 100. So we're looking for products with the biggest perfect square to pull out so that the radicals will match. So we're going to look at number 2. And please also remember that this is a product. So whenever we pull anything out, it is still a product. So 20 can be rewritten as 4 times 5x. So square root of 4, a 2 comes out. We multiply by what's already in front, which gives us 4 radical 5x. My second radical, remember also what can help you is that you know that these are going to most likely match. So if you're not even sure what that perfect square from this list that divides into it, you can look at that. 5 goes into 45 9 times which is our perfect square. So I can pull out a 3. Now they match. So remember this is an optional step of pulling out the distribution using the distribution property and pulling out radical 5x to see that we end up with run radical 5x. So you can also write that as radical 5x as well. Going to number two, three here, two of them already match. Notice I have a radical 11 and a radical 11. I think it is helpful to put a 1 in front there to see that these two will add together. So 2 minus 1 radical 11 gives me a 1 radical 11. And on my second piece over here, I can rewrite this as 4 times 11, where 4 is a perfect square. So I pull it out, and remember we are multiplying when we pull that piece out. So that gives me 6 radical 11. So 1 plus 6 gives me 7 radical 11. You have to simplify first before you can add them, and you can only add them if they match the radical by using the distribution property to factor it out. Going to number 5, because I already did number 4, and notice again over here, just as a reminder, I did the variables the same way and rewrote them because we're looking for pairs, so we need it to be an even power to take the square root of it, and which leaves me with an extra y there and an extra y there, which brought us down to where it matched on those pieces. Going to number 5, when we ever have a square root, we always want to look for the perfect square root first. And if we can't, can't have that, we do want to simplify it. So what I mean by that is actually 16 is a perfect square root for that first fraction. So that means a 4 can come out. I can also rewrite 25 as, sorry, 75 is 25 times 3, which means I can pull out a 5. This is going to simplify because this gives me 10 over 4. Okay. Um, which does simplify down to the 2's cancel, and that's going to leave me with a 5 halves. For my second piece, these are neither one of them are a perfect square, so remember how I said that y'all can always rewrite it? and simplify underneath if they're not a perfect square. So 8 does simplify. It goes into it 4 times. That's a perfect square. So that's going to give me a 4 over 2. That is my answer. I can get a common denominator there if I wanted to. I could rewrite that as 5 radical 3 plus 4 all divided by 2. Um, it depends on the problem. Going to our multiplication steps, we're still going to use FOIL, we're still going to use dis the difference of squares, we're still going to use distribution. 
So all of the rules still apply. So on number six, we are going to foil. So if it helps, draw your arrows. We get seven radical five plus seven radical two. If one is on the outside of a radical and one is on the inside, you cannot put them together in the sense of multiplying the number portions together. Going to my outside and my, my, my inside and my last. This is going to be a square root of 15 because both of them are underneath the radical. And this is going to be a square root of 6 because they're both under the radical. We scan this answer. None of them match. None of them can be simplified. So that is my answer. Pause this at any time you need to to go back and look over it or take time to do the problem. What we should recognize on number 7 is that this is a difference of squares. Remember how I suggested in the past to go ahead and write those squares down and then write what is each term. And this is a reminder from 10.1, 10.2, 10.3. If the root matches the exponent, they cancel out. So I'm left with 10 minus 3, which is 7. Anytime you deal with a difference of squares with radicals, you should have no radical left in your answer if you did it correctly. Going to number 8, this is a problem that I told you that you need to rewrite. I do this slightly different than she does it in the textbook. She goes by using the actual property of a squared minus 2ab, um, a squared minus 2ab plus b squared. I told you that most of you are better off just foiling this problem. So we get square root of 49 minus 3 radical 7. We always put the number in front. Minus 3 radical 7 plus 9. We will always have double the middle term, that's by design, so minus 6 radical 7. Remember you keep the radical, you add the coefficient in front. This is a perfect square. This comes down and you should notice these match, meaning they're like terms. So 7 plus 9 is 16. So my answer there is 16 minus 6 radical 7. The common mistake there is to try to tell me it's 10 radical 7, but I can't add these together. One has a radical, one does not. Take your time. If you're foiling, make sure you rewrite it. And it's the exact same piece because we're squaring it, so the signs should match. Number 9 we should recognize, again, is a difference of squares. Use the same exact method that we have in the past. Square root of k squared minus the square root of x squared. The square and the square root cancel. There's nothing I can add together at that point. That is a finished problem. Ten point four, like I said, just to scroll back here to make sure you remember. She's going to do it slightly different than me. I look at perfect squares. The biggest one that's a product, when I can break it down, pull that perfect square out using that product rule. And if it matches inside, I can collect them together using the distributive property and add the coefficient that's in front. Foiling is the same, difference of squares is the same, perfect squares are the same. Please practice. Really important idea though is difference of squares. You should not ever end up with a radical left. It should disappear once you've, you've used the property.